Hello everyone. Today in this video, I will share a rare case of Rasmussen's encephalitis. So today you will learn the brief about this disease. Then I will discuss a case history, then etiology, pathogenesis, then clinical stages, and then features and diagnosis. Then the differential diagnosis of this condition and treatment part. So there are few synonyms of the Rasmussen encephalitis. This is a chronic encephalitis with epilepsy, or sometimes we use the terminology chronic localized encephalitis, focal encephalitis, and sometimes this terminology is also used epilepsy with hemiplegia and intellectual disability, and sometimes instead of Rasmussen encephalitis, we use the terminology as a Rasmussen syndrome. So this disease is a chronic inflammatory disease and only affecting the one brain hemisphere. And in 85% cases, onset of the disease is in less than 10 years age group. So now I am going to tell you the case history in brief. Our patient was five years old, male child, admitted with the chief complaint of multiple episodes of the convulsion since last two to three hours with the altered sensorium. And characteristically, patient was having the right-sided tonic-clonic movements with the uprolling of eyeball and frothing from mouth, lasted for three to five minutes, and patient remained unconscious in between episodes. And there was a significant past history in past since last one year, patient was having the similar episodes of the convulsion almost one or two times in a month and when we assess the development and intelligence we found that patient was having the delayed development and the low IQ and in general physical examination there was frequent uh, because of the frequent fall there was a scar over the face were present and in systemic examination in especially in CNS examination we found that the patient is having the uh, in higher mental function, patient was unconscious and because the patient was unconscious at the time of admission, we cannot elicit the other part of the higher mental function. And in cranial nerve examination, it is again not able to assist at the time of admission, but later on we found cranial nerve examination was normal. And there were no signs of meningeal irritation and in motor system, we found that the patient was having the hypertonic upper and lower limb on right side while the normal on the left side and also the exaggerated deep tendon reflex were present on the right side of the body and sensory examination not able to elicit because the patient was not very cooperative so this is about the cns examination so now i further proceed for this case. exact etiology of the rasmussen encephalitis is unknown and few propose that it may be autoimmune encephalitis as they found that antibodies against the glu R3 subunit of the AMP receptors in few patients and also under the microscope they found that antibodies are there. And few think that it may be because of some unidentified infection example influenza, measles and cytomegalovirus as it triggered and which lead to the Rasmussen encephalitis. Now in the pathogenesis, it is similar to the viral encephalitis in this lymphocyte around the round cell and diffuse proliferation of the microglia occur. Later on, spongiform degeneration and cortical atrophy set in. And inflammatory changes in Rasmussen encephalitis include perivascular cuffing, microglial nodules, T lymphocytic infiltration, gliosis, meningeal inflammation, neuronal injuries and the low sucker. Now, what are the clinical stages of Rasmussen encephalitis? There is a first prodromal stage, then acute stage, then residual stage. In first prodromal stage, patient will have the known specific sign symptoms and then low seizure frequency will be there, mild hemiplegia can be there. Then patient will progress into the acute stage in which patient will have the frequent seizure. We label as a epilepsy partialis continua and then patient may have the progressive hemiparesis of the affected side hemianopia can be there cognitive deterioration and aphasia if the dominant hemisphere is affected from the acute stage patient will progress to the residual stage in which the permanent stable neurological deficit and continuous seizures will be there so our patient was between the prodromal and the acute stage 
focal seizure which occur in the rasmussen encephalitis progress to near continuous seizure as i said we use the terminology epilepsia partialis continua it occur consistently on one side of the body opposite the side of inflammation so in our patient patient was having the left sided cortical atrophy and the inflammation of the brain and uh, patient was having the right sided convulsion epc is characterized by the rapid rhythmic succession of the contraction and relaxation of the muscle group particularly your arms leg and face and which may occur either singularly or in the repetitive continuous series these seizures are refractory to treatment we label as a refractory seizure patient will have the progressive paralysis of one side of the body hemiparesis will be there patient of rasmussen encephalitis also having the delayed development because of the regression or developmental arrest patient will have the confusion disorientation and deterioration of the intellectual ability dementia will be there and in 50% cases onset preceded by the inflammatory episode example uri otitis media in last 6 month now how will you diagnose by the detailed patient history and the clinical examination and complete neurological evaluation by the eeg ct and mri brain ct brain in the rasmussen encephalitis in early stage remain normal while in the later stage cortical atrophy can be seen in the ct brain that's why we did not perform the ct brain in our case and in mri brain of the our case in this uh, picture you can see this is the mri brain of the our patient and in the mri t1 image unilateral cortical atrophy with x vacuo ventricular dilatation is seen in mri t2 hyper intense signal areas in the affected hemisphere can be seen and in mri dwi adc restricted diffusion may be seen in altered signal areas so in this mri picture this is mri t2 in this you can see the diffuse left hemisphere hyper intensity is there and also you can see the dilated left lateral ventricle we label the terminology x vacuo dilatation whenever there is a dilatation because of the cerebral atrophy not because of the hydrocephalus or not because of the direct dilatation of the ventricle due to the obstruction so because of the cortical atrophy this left lateral ventricle is uh, looks dilated so we use the terminology x vacuo for this in this image you can see the left cerebral sulci is are prominent suggesting the volume loss due to the atrophy so these sulci is are prominent and cortex is atrophied and in this image you can see the dilated left lateral ventricle and this is the prominent cerebral fissure is there because of the cortical atrophy so these are the characteristic and while the right side brain is totally normal only on affected side left side unilateral cortical atrophy and unilateral ventricular dilatation it is characteristic of rasmussen encephalitis in which patient will have the unilateral inflammation of the brain and unilateral cortical atrophy and unilateral lateral ventricle dilatation and in our case in eeg finding abnormal sleep eeg and it showing the left fronto parietal slowing now the few differential diagnosis especially radiological differential diagnosis are dyke davidoff mason syndrome sturge weber syndrome hemi megalencephaly while the clinical differentiation it may be uh, confusing with the some neurodegenerative disorder but in neurodegenerative disorder patient will have the generalized finding and sometime we may confuse with the autoimmune encephalitis and sometime it may be confusing with the some inborn error of metabolism so now i am going to tell you in brief radiological differential diagnosis in dyke davidoff mason syndrome patient will have the facial asymmetry with hemiparesis on mri there may be unilateral cerebral atrophy or hypoplasia which will be similar to the rasmussen encephalitis 
but these patient also having the midline shift and compensatory unilateral calvarial thickening that is not seen in case of rasmussen encephalitis in sturge weber syndrome clinically patient will have the port wine stain involve the ophthalmic division of trigeminal nerves and this feature is almost always present so over the face if you find there is a unilateral port wine stain then you can suspect sturge weber syndrome on ct there will be characteristic tram trick sign of calcification calvarial enlargement may be present in later on on mri there is pile angiomatosis congested cerebral veins resulting in ischemia with infarction and obliteration of cerebral parenchyma and in t2 mri calcification in later stage can be seen in hemimegalencephaly clinically patient will have the focal and sometime generalized infantile spasm developmental delay hemiparesis will be there may be having the some syndromic facial features in ct mri increased lateral ventricle size with shallow sulci enlarged gyri enlarged and thickened calvaria and white matter calcification will be there in pet scan it demonstrate hypometabolism in the affected hemisphere so these three are the radiological differential diagnosis now the treatment is very limited for the rasmussen encephalitis mostly treatment is symptomatic and supportive we have to start the anticonvulsant to treat the seizure there is some indication of the steroid we can give the steroid either injectable methylprednisolone or we can give the prednisolone oral tablets also for a short period of time and we have to taper on but its role is little bit doubtful we can use a immunoglobulin ivig for this condition and functional hemispherectomy is uh, basically the definitive treatment so this is all about the case of rasmussen encephalitis thank you so much